Hey guys, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this color block knit scarf. Now I know I'm a little bit late in the game for Christmas gifts, but I did make this in two days so if you really want to hustle I think you could probably do it and it's pretty simple. So if you want to see how I made it, stay tuned. For this project today you're going to need 6mm knitting needles and standard worsted weight acrylic yarn. So we're going to start with a long tail cast on, so you're going to leave a bit of yarn and you're going to do a slip knot. So you're going to make a loop, put it behind and pull it out and then you're going to put that loop on your needle. For a long tail cast on, you're going to pinch your two fingers, put it in between and then wrap your other fingers around the end of the yarn strands. Then you're going to hold it in this manner. You're going to pull it down a little bit. Then you're going to go into the thumb loop, over the finger loop, under the thumb loop again, take the thumb loop off, and then pull it tight. I don't show it very in depth, but I will leave a video down below in case you don't understand. And for this project, I believe I did 20 stitches, but you can always do more or less depending on how wide or skinny you want it to be. So I should explain that we're going to add a selvage to this scarf which just gives you a much cleaner edge. So in order to do that you're going to start with the yarn in front of the work and you're going to slip the first stitch purl wise off the needle. Then you're going to move the yarn to the back like it should be and then knit the rest of the row normally. And you're going to do this every single row for the entire project. If you don't know how to knit yet, I will put another video in the description box below, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going pretty fast, but I think you can pick it up. You're going to put the needle in from left to right, and you're going to wrap the yarn around the needle counterclockwise. And the good thing about knitting is that it's the same every single time, so you just do that for the entire scarf. The stitches do spread out a little bit after the first row, so keep that in mind when you're casting on. Here I'm just showing the selvage edge again. So the yarn's going to be in the back and you're going to pull it to the front. And then you're going to slip the first stitch purlwise onto the other needle. And then replace the yarn to the back of the work and knit the other stitches like normal. Now I'm going to show you how to change colors. You actually have to do it on the row before. So what you're going to do is you're going to knit up to the last stitch, cut the yarn, and then you're going to knit the last stitch with the new color. So this part can be a bit tricky. You have to turn it and in order to make the salvage like normal, you're going to slip it as if to purl like usual except it's kind of hard because everything's really loose so you're going to slip that off and then you're going to take all three strands that are in front and you're going to pull them to the back and usually after that because it's so loose i'm i will knot the two cut ends and then i'll just start knitting with the new color like normal I wanted to make a note that you should change colors on the same side every single time just so that all your strands are on one side instead of every other side or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
The reason that you have to change color on the row before is so that everything lines up perfectly because if you don't, the salvage color won't be the same as the previous color. I decided to do this four color repeat. These are basically all my favorite colors, so it's totally on brand for me. But I did want to note that even though it's all worsted, they're slightly different weights, which could make them look slightly differently. This yellow one here was actually the thinnest out of all of them, so it can make it a little bit wonky. So if you want to do stripes, I would recommend using the same brand of yarn for every single color. Here you can kind of see what I mean. The bluest one was definitely the thickest and the yellow one was definitely the thinnest. So sometimes it just looked a bit weird, but it didn't really matter that much in the end. So I decided to repeat my color scheme four times because I really wanted a really long scarf. So now I'm going to show you how you finish your scarf, how you cast off. In my opinion, casting off is really easy. I think it's actually more simple than casting on. So we're going to slip the first stitch like normal just to keep up with the selvage edge and then you're going to knit the next stitch and then you're going to pass the stitch behind over the stitch in front and you're just going to do that to every single stitch. So after you do that you're going to knit the next one and then continue on and on until you have one stitch left. Once you get to the last stitch, you're going to knit it and then pass the one behind over top. And then now that you have one stitch, you're just going to pull the string through the loop. I just did that that way. And then you're going to cut the yarn and pull it all the way through. And then you're done. That's how you cast off. Basically, if you chose to do only one color, you have it way easier than everyone else. Because every time you change color there's two little strands that you have to sew in which can be a pain not gonna lie it's gonna take a little bit of time but I think it's totally worth it so you want to make sure that both your strands are double knotted just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere and then you're gonna take whatever strand corresponds to the area where you're gonna sew it in in this case obviously I'm doing white and you're going to put it on a tapestry needle So there's a certain way of sewing into garter stitch to make it more invisible. You kind of have to mimic the pattern of the garter stitch. So I'm going to go in through one of these V's and then I'm going to go through the bumps to create another bump just to hide it. And since it's the same color, you'll never see it. So basically you just go up and down through the bumps and then side to side through the V's. I get really nervous so I probably sewed a little more than you probably need to do but you just go for I would say at least five stitches and then just cut the yarn and you're good. Here I'm going to show how to do it again but I'm going to do it with a contrasting color just to make it a little bit easier to see. So usually I start by going through one of the V's from right to left and then I'll go up through one of these bumps. You want to imitate the shape of the bump so wherever there's a bump on the bottom you want to make one on the top. So you go up and then you go down so now there'll be a bump on both sides and then you go through another V and you just repeat that pattern over and over until you're satisfied that it's secure.
So next I'm going to show you how to add some fringe. I'm not a super big fan of fringe, so that's why it's not on the final product, but this is how you would do it if you do want it. First, you're going to take some yarn, whatever color you want, and you're going to wrap it around your hand about a million times, or how many strands of fringe you want, basically. And then when you're satisfied, you're going to take a pair of scissors and just cut on one edge. So in order to do this, you're going to need a crochet hook and you're going to insert it into the bottom of your scarf. Then you're going to take a couple strands for demonstration. I'm just using one and you're going to fold it over and then you're going to pull it through the scarf and then you're going to wrap the hook around the strands and pull it through that loop and then pull it tight. Basically, you would just repeat this over and over again until you have enough for your liking. I would recommend using like two or three strands of yarn and maybe go up a bit higher than I'm doing here. And then once you're satisfied with the fullness, you can just take some scissors and trim it up so it's all straight. And with that, the scarf is done, and I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite ways to wear it. I really like folding it in half and then pulling the ends through the loop. I think this looks really cute, and it keeps your neck really warm, and it looks really great under a jacket, as I show right here. And of course, every great scarf comes with a great hat. And of course, the hat has to match the scarf. If you want this exact hat, you can find it on my Ravelry page at Corduroy Kid. What I love about scarves is they're so personal and you can wear them a million different ways. Here I'm just messing around, but if you're really, really cold, this would keep you very warm. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have anything that you want me to make in a future video, please leave it down below in the comments and I will be sure to look at it. Thank you. Okay, bye.